And you're watching Book TV on C-SPAN 2, and we are on location as part of our university series at Liberty University in Lynchburg, Virginia, talking with some of the professors who are also authors. And now joining us is Michael Babcock. His book, Unchristian America, Living with Faith in a Nation That Was Never Under God. Professor Babcock, let's start with that subtitle. What do you mean by that? <laughs> yeah, that is a pretty, uh, a pretty pointed subtitle. And uh, speaking first as an author, I've had the experience of writing titles for books that uh, get shelved. The titles do, and they get changed along the way. And that was one that, uh, that developed in the course of publication. But it, does, it is a fair and accurate representation of the basic argument of the book. Which is? Which is that uh, the notion that America is, uh, a, in some sense that is meaningful at all, a Christian nation, is, is something that's subject to be challenged. And I try to challenge it in this book and uh, to really drive at the heart of what does that mean to claim that America is a cultural, that it is a Christian nation. And, and, and really what I end up with is that it's Christian only in culture in some sense. And that, uh, we, that as Christians we need to understand what that means if we're going to live well and effectively uh, with faith in this world. Well give an example of what you mean. It's a Culturally, it's a Christian nation. Well, I mean, it's, it's a historical commonplace that uh, this country was founded by pilgrims, by Christians who came with a certain religious orientation, and uh, that's the, the story that we learn in elementary school, at least I did growing up. I'm not sure that's the case anymore. But in that sense, our, our institutions, our framework, it's, I, I think it's not terribly controversial to say that that uh, our institutions were framed by Christian values and the Judeo-Christian ethic and, and, and that is a kind of cultural argument to make. Uh, but uh, at the end of the day, what are we then defending if we say that this is a Christian country? We're defending a set of cultural values. And as a Christian, I've been called to defend more than that. I've been called to speak with conviction to more than that and to speak to something that transcends any given culture. And uh, speaking as a Christian, I am a Christian who happens to be an American. And uh, I travel widely throughout the world, and I, I, I travel to Nepal, and I speak in churches there and uh, engage in pastoral training there. And I, I'm working with Christians who happen to be Nepalis or happen to be Indians. And I think it's very important as a Christian to keep that perspective. And that's a central argument that I try to bring out in this book. So when you hear people say America is an exceptional nation. Do you agree with that? Disagree? You have some. <laughs> well, that's a great question. There's no, there, there's no doubt. I think that America is exceptional, but the doctrine of American exceptionalism is a very, very tricky and controversial uh, idea to engage in. And usually, that's meant. Uh, it's bound up in in the ideas of destiny, and it's bound up in the idea that we are, in some sense, a, a God ordained nation, or a God commissioned people. And I, I want to challenge that very directly because there are a lot of peoples in the course of human history who have, who have claimed that. And uh, one of the cultures that I discuss very specifically in the book is that of ancient Rome. And uh, central to ancient Roman uh, self-ideals were the notion that they were called out from among the nations by the gods with a specific mandate. And that was to conquer people and to extend Roman ideas and Roman values throughout the world. So, therefore? Well, therefore, I think that calls into question the premise, uh, if, you, if you translate that into the contemporary scene, of what it means to say that America is a God-called, God-ordained, uh, God-destined uh, nation. And uh, there's no question in my mind, again, speaking as a Christian, that God works in history. I believe that. I believe that uh, God is the sovereign God of history. But uh, to say that the United States is a new Israel, which was a very common idea in 19th century political ideology and, and I think in large measure has been adopted by some, uh, some uh, on the religious right and uh, who believe that uh, America is a kind of new Israel and uh, called to a, a particular mission within the world. That's what I want to call into question because God is doing His work in the world but uh, I believe that God is doing His work through the church. He's doing His work through people who follow Jesus Christ in their lives and, and in their everyday lives. Professor Babcock, you write that America is moving to be more secular. Is that necessarily a bad thing? Does that mean we're not defending our cultural tradition? No, the argument that I'm making is a purely historical one in the book. 
and, uh, and, I, and I'm really calling my fellow Christians to just recognize the forces of, of modern history. Uh, that is that America is becoming more secular, not because prayer was taken out of the schools, as we, we often hear in the early 1960s, and that that was some watershed in the secularization of America. In fact, I argue that the secularization of America is a centuries-long process. It's really the secularization of the Western world. The modern age from the time of really the, the last five or six hundred years has been the story of the ascendancy of a secular uh, materialistic worldview in the Western world and uh, in which uh, religious ideas and values and institutions are increasingly marginalized and we're seeing that a little bit slower than in Western Europe but we're a little behind the curve on that but we're part of that same process it's a kind of uh, in that sense inevitable movement of modern history and uh, Christianity uh, is certainly a historical force within within culture and our values and our beliefs should not be uh, uh, secularized in that sense or shouldn't fall under that. We should transcend that and rise above that. And that's really the argument that I make. You close your book by talking about a visit you made to Nepal mm. and an event that you missed here at Liberty University. It was a very powerful event for me because it was, uh, I was actually planning to go to Nepal right around the time when the founder of our institution, uh, the late Chancellor uh, Dr. Jerry Falwell, passed away. And, and it was a very moving experience it was around here, around this campus. And uh, those uh, who have been here for quite a while, as I have, remember him very fondly for his vision and for what, uh, what his commitment was to not just this institution, but to our nation and to our culture. And, and yet it put things into perspective for me as well. Because uh, I remember increasingly how Dr. Falwell in the last number of years spoke increasingly about the role of, of the church, the role of Christians in their everyday lives living out uh, the mandate of following Christ and how that is ha that's what has transforming power. More than what candidates we elect or what policies that we see put into effect in the, in the houses of Congress. And I heard him say those things. Uh, he who was so much associated with the rise of the religious right over the last generation. And I thought about that much as I was overseas and I saw the power of the, of the message of Christ at work in the lives of people in a place like Nepal. So that for me crystallized that message that the following Christ is, is something that transcends the claims of any particular culture no matter how much we are a part of and how much we love the culture that we're in. Professor Babcock, you uh, mentioned Jerry Falwell's role in the rise of the religious right. The title of your book, the thesis of your book, has it created some controversy on the right, in the conservative right? I've had some, some good and interesting conversations with colleagues, but uh, I think it's important to emphasize that Liberty University is, a, is an academic institution. We are a community of scholars who follow Christ. And, uh, and we debate and we discuss things and we have differences of perspectives and that's something that's not widely known outside the walls of our institution. But I think it's very important for people to know that, that within that community of, of fellowshipping believers that we disagree about issues. And, and uh, at the bottom, uh, the bottom line, at the end of the day, we're on the, same, uh, we're on the same page when it comes down to those core values of what Christ has called us to in the world. What do you teach here at Liberty? I teach humanities. So I teach, is, I teach uh, the history of, of Western culture. I teach uh, the, the, the values that I'm discussing in this book. And, and that's what, one of the things that, that really led me to take that, that centuries-long view of these issues. Because I think we can take a very narrow, cramped view of, from one election to another. And uh, as though one election, and we're in election year, as though one election is going to be the watershed and there's no turning back. And we have that. We tend to elevate the importance of the moment that we're living in. It's interesting that we have that tendency to do that. But when you study history, you realize that things take 500 years sometimes to develop. And certainly the secularization of the Western world is one of those things. Unchristian America is the name of the book, Living with Faith in a Nation That Was Never Under God. Liberty University professor Michael Babcock is the author.